just having a, a look at the cold start on this uh, old Yamaha uh, 60. I've taken the carburetor muffler off and we're just going to take off the uh, uh, two stroke tank so that we can have a look at it. The fore and aft uh, 10 millimeter headed uh, bolts and screws that hold the oil tank on are different lengths. The shorter ones go at the front and the longer ones go at the back of the engine. This gizmo here is the cold start system and this part is a wax motor. A wax motor is something similar to the thing that uh, opens a greenhouse window. So when it gets warm it turns the cold start off. So uh, the thing will be over fueling if it isn't getting turned off. So uh, the first thing to do is find out if the wax motor is working. So we've traced the blue wire from the motor around this side of the uh, engine where it was connected to the electrics by a simple uh, bullet connector. Just take a picture of the route the wire went so we get it back in the right place. So I've measured the uh, length from end to the shoulder uh, with this wax, mo wax motor not energised and I'm going to fasten it to a battery and see if it pushes out any further. So with the uh, wax motor connected to the battery after a minute or two the uh, uh, wax motor had uh, energized and pushed the needle out a good uh, what three eighths of an inch and it is indeed quite warm so the motor's working next we need to know that the uh, wax motor is getting uh, voltage so uh, with multimeter connected to earth and touched on there with the engine turned on we should get 12 volts thereabouts. Now because I wasn't getting uh, 12 volts to here I'm suspecting this might be fed by a thermostat so it may not feed 12 volts until the engine's warmed up. Uh, so we're going to run the engine in a tank and uh, see if I do end up getting 12 volts there. Well the rest of the day later I've more or less got it sorted um, there was no voltage to this wire at all when the engine's cold. But when the engine is running and starts to warm up, we got up to about 6 volts. And when the engine's hot, it will probably get full voltage. Uh, but I don't know. And that's uh, the voltage that works the wax motor and turns the uh, uh, cold start off. So basically the cold start is on until it's turned off. Now to access this cold start gizmo uh, you have to take off this, the uh, carburetor clamp plate, which means undoing all six screws and loosening the carburetors, which isn't really something that I wanted to do. Well as usual it's uh, by doing things that you find out how to do things. Uh, the thing to do is leave that plate on, uh, loosen the top screws and the bottom two screws and take the middle screws out and then after you've undone a couple of pipes you can withdraw the whole carburetor. This is the uh, plunger off the cold start. It has three positions. Fully anti-clockwise is the normal position. And the thing is cammed so that that uh, o-ring will lift off the uh, uh, seat in, a, uh, in an emergency situation. Now this little red plastic lever is broken and you can't buy that separately. That thing is uh, 100 quid. So we're using it as it is. So what you need to know if you're uh, if your cammed lever is broken, in the normal position those two slots which uh, align the uh, fuel orifices uh, are in the 45 degree position. 
and then the cam in the when this lever or the screwdriver slot is in the uh, vertical position the uh, o-ring is lifted off its seat and when it's uh, further round in that position the horizontal position the uh, o-ring is fully seated so what I've discovered now is the uh, reed valve holder is cracked just there so that is one problem with this cold start device there is a, uh, a small o-ring on the end of the plunger uh, fastened to the end of this uh, red uh, lever and uh, if that o-ring fails it will not permanently close the cold start so it could be constantly over fueling now I haven't uh, bothered to figure out the technical side of how this works the way the reed valves and everything work but the practical side is the thing over fuels direct into the crankcase until the uh, uh, solenoid, the wax motor, uh, turns it off. So, because the uh, reed valve uh, case is cracked, the thing will most probably be overfueling all the time, which is most probably why he's getting oily plugs and oil everywhere. Uh, so, we've blocked the pipe out of the overfuel and blocked the pipe where it goes into the crankcase. Um, so we'll see if we can get the engine started. We should be able to use the boat like this until the uh, spare parts come. Now uh, Yamaha have sent us the uh, wrong o-ring for the end of this uh, uh, plunger rod. Uh, so I've taken the existing one off and measured it and uh, it's 2.5 diameter by 2 millimeter section o-ring so you can probably buy 10 of those for a couple of quid off eBay which is what we're going to do we have replaced this uh, plastic reed valve holder uh, it was expensive it was 40 quid I think was it John? something like that uh, it was 40 quid or so and the tight fisted buggers don't supply it with the o-ring uh, so be warned if you're replacing it you need to uh, buy the o-ring as well uh, we replaced it because it's cracked no doubt some uh, previous ham fist has broken it in fact you can see where they've had a tool in there to try and pick it out and I don't know whether you can see it but the uh, reed valve seat is uh, damaged so it did need replacing we're also replacing the uh, o-rings, uh, the uh, carburetor to manifold o-rings because they were damaged and had been replaced with, uh, with bits of o-ring. Uh, and I'm going to try to measure them for you so you can uh, uh, access them other than through Yamaha. The inside diameter uh, of the o-ring groove is just short of 40 millimeters so I would think a 40 millimeter o-ring would do the job and they are a two millimeter sectioned o-ring the grooves conveniently have little teeth that hold the o-ring in position when you uh, fit it like that which is good <laughs> 